Hello and good morning friends. Welcome to the CC Edusite Live Lecture. Dear friends, under our series Organizational Behavior, today we would be talking on organizational climate as well as on organizational culture. And for this discussion, we have once again with us the most prolific professor, Dr. Namita Rajput. Dr. Namita Rajput is a principal in Sri Aurobindo uh, Evening College, University of Delhi. So let's welcome our guest, Dr. Namita Rajput. Hello ma'am, welcome to the Edusite Lecture. So good morning friends, uh, here we have a very important uh, topic and pertinent topic on organization, culture and climate. According to Bodek and Bono, organization, culture is the name and the belief and the expectations about the organization life. While the organizational culture is an indicator of whether those beliefs and expectations are fulfilled or not. So there is an interplay of certain kind of beliefs and certain kinds of expectations. So, the interplay of which is called as the climate and culture. Now, when you call about uh, the organizational climate, we have to see whether the expectations of the people are fulfilled or not. So, there are certain organizational factors that affect the organizational climate. The first is the selection process of the employees, the leadership style and approach to solve the problems of the employees, wage administration attitude to implement change and incorporate the latest technology and the job description. So these are the very important uh, organizational factors on the basis of which we judge the organizational climate. That is, what is the selection process of the employee, whether it is, uh, you know, a rational system or it is some kind of a system in which the subjectivity also plays a vital role, followed by what kind of a leadership skill is there. So when you talk about the leadership skills, we have autocratic, democratic, free reign, etc. So it is very important to uh, for us to know about the organizational factor and the most important factor we have talked about is the selection process of the employees followed by the leadership style and approach which is being followed in an organization. Then we have to deal with a very important issue called the wage administration that how the employees are being paid, what are the pertinent factors which are going to affect the wages, etc. Then of course, uh, uh, we are living in a very contemporary world in which uh, there is a changes in the technology, the uh, indent of the in information and communication technologies. So when you have these kind of changes, sweeping changes taking place in the technology, so we have to see what kind of uh, attitude is there uh, in terms of accepting those changes, in terms of adapting those changes, because unless and until the organization plays a vit vital role in terms of adaption of these kind of changes, it is very difficult for the organization to move ahead in the process of success and growth. And then we have a job description that is what are the role and responsibilities uh, and what are the selection criteria in terms of duties and responsibilities, the, the overall mandate uh, and the boundaries uh, which are relating to a particular job, what are the basic qualifications which are required because once you talk about the job description we have specifications also and we have the job analysis also. So job analysis, description and specifications are the vital aspects of the organization and uh, these are the organizational uh, factors which uh, you know affect the organizational climate. So the more uh, process, good process we have in terms of the weight selection in terms of the organizational climate, then of course it is very easy to predict that organizational climate and work upon it. Then we have, uh, you know, the list is not exhaustive. We have number of other factors also, which is a part of the organizational climate. Now we have uh, organizational structure and frequency to modify the same based on the need. The performance evaluation, promotion policy, efforts involved in promoting creativity and innovations, availability of resources for research and development, organizational values and promotion of culture. So let us discuss these factors one by one. So we have already done uh, the process of selection as uh, one of the uh, pertinent factors, uh, the organizational factors which affect the organizational climate followed by the kind of leadership skills, uh, the leadership styles which we use uh, and of course uh, the wage administration, the attitude of uh, implementing the latest technology uh, in terms of the latest technology of computers etc. and of course the job description. So now we have another uh, list uh, which we have in, you know, enlisted now. Uh, we, the first important aspect is the organizational structure 
and the uh, the frequency to modify the same on the basis of the needs now we understand that the organizational structure keeps on uh, i mean the organizational climate keeps on changing in terms of that whatever structure we have built there is a strong need to modify that there is a strong need to incorporate those changes and if we are successful in that the organizational structure and uh, uh, would be a definitely a better one because we have incorporated uh, the changing paradigm into it unless and until we uh, incorporate these dynamic changes which are taking place it is very difficult to move ahead because uh, the changes which are taking place are very pertinent uh, for the existence of the organization so it is definitely uh, a very very good saying that trend should be your friend and you should incorporate and include all the sweeping changes uh, in terms of technology in terms of political changes in terms of the psychological changes in terms of the social changes into the organizational structure to make it a success then we have a performance evaluation now performance evaluation is a very important uh, factor which determines the organizational climate and uh, which is definitely a very important and the pertinent part of the organizational climate so the performance evaluation could be a 360 degree it could be uh, from the peer it could be some kind of uh, criteria in terms of the production uh, you know criteria etc so whatever organizational evaluation criteria you use should be very rational should be very good acceptable to all simple understandable and uh, if all these uh, you know features are there as far as the evaluation criteria is concerned it would be very good for the organization then we have the promotion policy and its implementation whenever uh, an organization member is there so he would always strive to achieve the success uh, in the organization and uh, for that matter any uh, young uh, prolific person who joins the organization he looks for the career path and the career growth plans and that must be flashed on the website of the company because that is the uh, you know basic criteria to join that company so unless and until the organization has opened certain promotional avenues it would be difficult uh, for an individual to stay in that organization and if it is not there or the absence of which would lead to rise in the labor turnover uh, which is definitely not a good thing for the organization because uh, the more and more people join the more and more people go it is a definitely a very high cost for the organization and it is not uh, preferable in terms of the organization uh, so it should also you know offer some kind of good promotional policies and the schemes for them to stay in that organization then of course uh, every now and then there are changes taking place so you must invest in terms of the research and the development so the resources must be diverted to achieve this uh, the need for the resources and the uh, in the research and the development because that is going to improve the organizational culture so we must see to it that uh, it is present then we have organizational values and the promotion of the culture unless and until you uh, have the organizational values uh, it is difficult to promote that organization so as a matter of fact every uh, basic step must be taken to incorporate the organizational values and promotion of the culture now uh, let us do the organizational climate in detail we have done the factors we have done uh, the basic uh, parameters which is relating to organizational climate so we have now a very important uh, definition which is uh, called as the organizational climate and what does it envelop and what does it include organizational climate though abstract in the concept is normally associated with the job performance and job satisfaction and the moral of the employees climate it is commonly experienced the phenomenon and after referred to by many expressions as atmosphere surrounding milieu environmental and culture etc organizations are always unique each of its tradition methods and actions and culture that is there totally comprise its the climate for the people so here after uh, having the conceptual framework and the background of the organizational climate we come to this criteria that the organizational climate is not uh, stable it is always dynamic and it is determined by the values by the traditions and every organization has its unique climate 
and when you talk about the multinationals they have their own climate when you talk about the, uh, the domestic organizations they have their own climate and of course uh, it also depends upon the nature of the business which you are doing but yes uh, this is one thing that uh, these uh, it has different nomenclatures and uh, this is called by different names also like for example we call it as the atmosphere surrounding milieu environmental and culture etc but yes we must understand that every organization has its own tradition methods culture uh, which determines the organizational climate and it is very important uh, that we must analyze all the factors which are responsible for the organizational climate and for this uh, we have the following slide with us organizational climate is very important factor to be considered in studying and analyzing the organization because it has a profound influence on the outlook well being and attitude of the organizational members and thus on their total performance it affects the behavior of the people in their ways as defining a stimuli that confront the individual placing constraints though the individual freedom and the choice and providing the source of reward and punishment the climate is worthwhile to understand and measure because there are organizational and human benefits a good climate and powerful disadvantage of many kind of bad climate so we have under this backdrop we have very few uh, important uh, connotations which are deriving from this particular slide the first is that that it is most important factor and if we study the organizational uh, factors like this we are able to conclude that this is the organizational culture and environment not only this it also uncovers and entails the well-being and the attitude of the organizational members and people so if the organizational climate is good it is definitely going to impact the performance levels of the employees so the organizational climate has to be very good for the performance to be good so there's a direct relationship between the organizational culture and the organizational performance of the members more better good environment leads to better quick and good performance levels of the employees this is one parameter another parameter which we would like to highlight is that that uh, it affects the behavior of the people as uh, uh, defining the stimuli and confront the individual placing constraints upon individual freedom of choice and avoiding the source of reward and punishment and of course uh, overall we say that uh, a good climate uh, is good for the people and the members and the bad climate is bad for the people and for the organization so let us have a look on this particular slide the bad climate has been linked to bad behavior such as first the turnover second the stress third is the sickness fourth is the poor performance fifth is the error rate sixth is the wastage and the seventh is the accident so the turnover stress sickness poor performance error rate wastage and accidents these are called as the bad climate and what is the bad behavior definitely these two things are not good for the organizational climate and we should have the vice versa and the you know the opposite of these things for the organizational climate to be good so we, it is not desirable which we are studying in the first frame of the slide the sabotage absenteeism go slow and bullying with your employees and between yourselves these are called as a bad behavior so i'll explain you that the bad climate and the bad behavior is not good at all for the organizational uh, you know performance uh, for the organizational climate and overall it is a bad factor a bad influence on the organization uh, structure as such so we should uh, to the maximum possible extent if you want to have the mileage of the good resources with us which are very efficient and uh, overall the resources and other pa parameters are concerned we should try and avoid the uh, the bad climate and the bad behavior of the people because they are having a negative spill over on the organizational performance and the structure so the opposite of this we will study now that is what is good climate and what is a good behavior so this is going to give you a very clarity a very clear figure in terms of how the good climate is good for the organization and how the bad climate is bad for the organization so we have a list of about 7 uh, good climate and about 6 good desirable behaviors which we will have a look on the slide the first is the job satisfaction the second is the confidence 
third is the affective commitment, fourth is the intention to quit, fifth is the emotional exhaustion, sixth is the faith in the organization, seventh is the performance. So when you talk about the good climate, that means if the people are very satisfied uh, for, with, from their jobs and uh, it is called as a job satisfaction and uh, you know people have tremendous confidence in them because unless and until they have a confidence they will not be able to put in their best efforts uh, to achieve the organizational uh, productivity etc and of course uh, they should be having a good level of commitment that is the effective commitment and uh, they should not be having any kind of an intention to quit and they work as a fighters with their heart and souls with their commitment and confidence and with their culmination of all the knowledge which they have so you know as far as the emotional exhaustion is concerned they should be emotionally intelligent to counter all kind of emotions in the organization because here you have an interplay of the emotions of the people then you should have a faith in the organization and your performance levels should be the best so when you have a, a overall contention of this and overall uh, enveloping of this we call it as a good climate now coming on to the other part that is what is the good and the desirable behavior of the people the first is the risk taking that is you should be strategic departure from the status quo open communication trust operational freedom and employee development so let me explain these concepts one by one so the good and the desirable behavior has the following characteristics and the prerequisites the first is that the employees must be able to take the risk and uh, the risk is not a simple risk it has to be a strategic risk when you talk about the strategic risk that is the level of risk has to be planned in advance and it should be strategic in nature and uh, unless and until you plan your strategies unless and until you counter those uh, strategies the risk would be very very high so the risk taking must be calculated in advance and has to be linked with these strategies so that is why we say that a risk taking which is strategic in nature is definitely a good desirable behavior because you cannot be reckless you cannot be uh, you know just like that taking decisions without any uh, planning without any pros and cons so whenever you are taking risk it must be strategic in nature then of course uh, when you are working in an organization uh, you should not be static that is uh, Uh, unless and until you move ahead unless and until you take decisions unless and until you are brave in that uh, it would be very difficult for the organization to move ahead so the status quo uh, i mean there is a com- there should be a complete departure from your status quo because unless and until you take a departure from the status quo this position is not going to change and if you want to have a significant and uh, good changes in the organization you must uh, have a good departure from the status quo so that is of course a, a important prerequisite for the organizational climate not only this you should have a trust uh, in the system trust in the employees trust uh, in the overall managerial system etc so you should have the operational freedom in terms of what you do how you do when to do etc followed by if all the things are present the employee development takes place and employee development obviously is also a part of the desirable and the good behaviors in the organization so let us move further that organizational climate furthermore provides a very useful platform to understand such characteristics of the organization as whether it is stable or not that is it uh, uh, includes the stability factors Uh, the creativity factors the innovative factors communication factors and effectiveness so when you have to study the organizational culture of any organization for that matter these are the five important concepts which you have to keep in mind that what is the status on stability what is a status on creativity what is the status on innovations because innovations uh, is on the heart and the nucleus of the organization the more innovative you are the better results you would have because it is having a commercial perspective uh, altogether and not only this the communication and effectiveness are also the primarily the most important features of the organizational climate so let us list them once again first the stability two creativity three innovation fourth communication and fifth effectiveness so if all these factors are present we say that the organizational climate is good 
and the Richard and M. Hawks had classified the organizational climate into two important factors because he is very important uh, person in this field. So, let us have what he has to say as far as the organizational factors are concerned. The overt factors and the other are called as the covert factors. These are the two important factors which uh, Mr. Richard M. Hoggets have highlighted. So, we would study these factors in detail and would also be concluding in relation to what is the impact on the organizational climate, whether you talk about the overt factors or whether you talk about the covert factors. The overt factors can be measured and the fair assessment can therefore be made about the intentions of the management and the efforts they are putting into building an appropriate organizational climate. While on the other hand, the covert factors cannot be quantified being of subjective nature. So, overall we can say the overt factors are objective in nature and the covert factors are subjective in nature. And of course, to determine the quantity, the quality and the parameters of the organizational climate, the most important factor which has been highlighted by Mr. Richard is the overt factor over the covert factors. Now, we would be discussing the overt and the covert factors in detail. The overt factors are as follows. First, hierarchy in the organization. Two, the goals of the organization. Three, the financial resources. Fourth, the skills and ability of the employees. Fifth is the technological state of the organization. The performance standards adopted and uh, the last is the efficiency management. So, if you see these factors, these factors are a reality in terms of what is actually happening in the organization. So, we will take up one by one. The first is the hierarchy. Hierarchy is the, uh, the structure of the organization which flows from top to bottom. It is a flow of authority and as and when we move down the hierarchy, the authority goes on decreasing. So, if we have a decentralized setup in terms of the hierarchy, in terms of the movement of the authority from top to bottom. So, the overt factors are primarily the most important uh, structural factors of the organizational climate. Second is the goals of the organization. The goals of the organizations are also very important uh, and are uh, objective factors and one of the overt factors which have a deep impact on the organizational climate. Why so? Because the goal gives you the mission, the goal gives you the ends, the goal gives you the road, the goal gives you the direction where the organization has to go. So, of course, uh, nothing is incomplete unless and until you have the finances with you. So, the financial resources primarily also play a pivotal role uh, to determine the organizational climate as a matter of fact. Then we have the skills and the ability of the employees. Uh, the skills and the ability of the employees are also important uh, to determine the organizational culture. The more skilled uh, and the able people we have, the better climate we have because they are going to put in their immense, uh, you know, the capabilities of uh, innovation, creativity and putting the organization uh, straight on the path of the success. Then we have the performance standards adopted. The performance ad uh, standards adopted must be fair, they must be rational, they must be good uh, because uh, these are the parameters, these are the cutoff points, these are the block roads uh, which we have to cross and uh, the more we cross these standards, the more we achieve those standards, the better it is for the organizational climate. And the efficiency measurement is also very important uh, because when you call an individual an efficient uh, person, we call it as the input is less and the output is more. So, the efficiency measurement is primarily one of the overt features and have a deep impact on the organizational culture as such. So, on the other side of it, we have the covert factors. The covert factors, they are subjective in nature. And uh, for example, and uh, uh, the, we have the values, we have the attitude, we have the norms, we have the feelings, interaction, supportiveness, satisfaction. So, if you analyze these, uh, uh, these covert factors in detail, all these factors, one, they are not measurable. Number two, they are subjective. So, on the basis of these two prime features, that is the uh, subjectivity and uh, not measurable aspect of these covert factors, these are less important for the organizational climate. But otherwise, if you see the other side of it, they are important to, to build up a good organizational climate. The value system. The value system is overall uh, the set of moral values, the set of standards. 
uh, which we say that it is good or bad or it is right and wrong. So, if you have a good value system in the organization, definitely it is good for the organization followed by the attitude of the people. The attitude of the people should be positive and uh, nothing uh, takes uh, in person as far as the attitude is concerned. The attitude should be a gratitude aspect. Then we have the norms of the organization. The norms should also be good. The feelings of the people, uh, it is of course not measurable because sometimes the people, they are multifaceted, they wear faces. So, unless and until you lift the veil and see what exact position is, the feelings of the people, they can hide, they can do anything about it. But yes, you should be emotionally balanced and intelligent to see the other side of it and to see the dark side of it. Followed by the interaction. Unless and until uh, there is a strong interaction between the management and the employees, the organizational culture would not be good. So, as a matter of fact, you should be uh, striving the best efforts to have the interaction of the employees and the management to the best possible extent. Followed by the supportiveness. The supportiveness uh, means that uh, whatever endeavors uh, the employees are putting, the management must support all these endeavors to make the uh, people, uh, you know, uh, taking more of initiative, uh, be more disciplined, uh, be more aggressive in their approach, etc. Followed by the satisfaction. The satisfaction comes when all the factors are positive and the organizational climate is good. So, we have now till discussed the covert and the overt factors which are primarily having a deep impact on the organizational culture. So, like living beings or say individuals have their own nature and personality in the similar way, the organizations also have their own personality. An organization can be a strict organization with structural rigidity or it can be fun filled, loving, warm and competitive. Being a new induct, inducted employee on the job, he or she should look around and take a feel of the atmosphere in the organization and it becomes imperative for the organizations today to create a culture of calmness. So, we have uh, discussed here that as we are living beings, as we are individuals, as we are humans, we are having our own emotions, we are having our own mindsets and definitely all these factors leads to uh, a different mindset of all different people who are connected with an organization. So, what is prime consequence of this is that we have the different culture altogether, we have a different strict, light, disciplined, undisciplined organization all over. We cannot have the same structure all over because we are playing with the psyche of the individuals, we are having a impact uh, uh, you know of our thinking onto the organizational culture as a whole some people like to take risks some people are risk avertive some people are risk takers some are more strategic some are less strategic some people like to be governed some people like to be uh, free in terms of their working so you know some people like to be fun filled warm and competitive so all these things uh, tend to amount to one thing that organizational culture is different for all organizations so, we should try and build up the organization as positive as possible. Thank you so much.
this part of my lecture we will be talking about the organizational climate and the earlier part we completed what is the organizational climate. Now we have seen that like human beings, like individuals, we have our own nature and personality in a similar way the organizationals also have a personality although it is non-living but yes all the factors, parameters uh, you know they tend to amount to call it as a personality. An organization can be strict organization with structural rigidity or it can be fun filled, loving, warm and competitive. Being a new inducted employee on the organizational job, he or she would look around and take a feel of atmosphere in the organization. It becomes imperative for the organizations of today to create a culture of calmness. So we have discussed here that people have their own likes and dislikes, the organization also has its own personality on the similar ground as the individuals have. So we should try and build up the organization culture which is suitable to all and in which the people who are working in that organization also feel very very good. So Google should be created with a kind of a workplace uh, that have created for their employees right from the creative indoors to the couches and the funky lobbies each of these attributes were a typical no more uh, no no for a workplace. So we have given an example here that the Google, uh, they created a workplace which is non-contemporary, which is non-traditional. So they are, they are, it is very, very modern. They are trying to build up the things which are liked by their people, like the funky lobbies, they have a very good workplace, they have, you know, uh, they have the couches. Uh, and we have otherwise a traditional furniture of the office, like with a formal chair and a table. But here, the Google is trying to create a culture in which the organizational climate is very in formal with funky lobbies and couches and uh, I mean otherwise these attributes uh, when you talk about the formal level is no no for a workplace. So they are trying to create a workplace which is uh, definitely contemporary and not traditional in nature or they are uh, trying to create a place which is liked by all their people. So taking it forward the organization culture is set of the shared values which they have with the belief symbols behavior norms that influence the way the employees think, feel and behave in the workplace and guide them to decide the act at the unconscious level. So we have uh, seen here that uh, the organizational culture has many uh, features like for example the what is the shared value, what is the shared belief of the people, I mean what kind of symbols do they use, what kind of thinking the employees have and how do they behave in the workplace. So all these things together is called as an organizational culture. The common attributes identified by the scholar and the researcher of an organizational culture are that the culture is closely knit with the concept of shared meaning that the organizational culture is built upon a social fabric impacted upon the environment and the organizational culture is pervasive and dwells at a level of the organization. Organization culture can be stated as a dis descriptive term which describes how an employee rates his or her organization. Whether the organization offers the work environment or does it encourage them a teamwork or does it encourage initiatives. Now when you talk about the organizations of today, uh, we have a particular and a typical features. Like for example, uh, there is always a good initiative from X company in terms of that they give a free hand to the employees to take up anything which they want. Like similarly, the some organizations, they create a very good atmosphere in terms of, uh, you know, initiating uh, certain uh, initiatives, uh, the environmental initiatives or for that matter, any good initiatives. Some people are trying to build up a friendly environment. So some people are going to give a very different culture to their uh, employees. So it is definitely, the culture is very descriptive in nature and uh, the work environment which is being offered by the uh, organizations of today, it is different uh, from each other. The organizational culture is a universal phenomena. However, whether it is a uniform and all across needs of the deliberated upon, the organization may follow a universal culture throughout the organization. However, the subcultures which are formed to discuss the common problems, experiences of a common uh, group of employees cannot be ruled out. The core values of the organizations are reflected in the dominant structure of the organization. So when we are talking about the organizational culture as such, the organizational culture is primarily, uh, it focuses on the dominant structure of the organization that it gives you the basic reason for which it, it is existing. And once we have uh, the core value in the heart of the organization as such, then we move on to discuss that uh, what is the universal culture. Sometimes the culture is, you know, uniform throughout, 
but we should not be forgetting this fact that we have the subcultures also the subcultures uh, uh, you know it depends upon department to department we have small departments the organization culture would be different and we move on to the other department the organization culture would also be different and uh, overall we say that there is a uniformity of the uh, center and the core values but yes uh, there is a subjectivity in the departments also. So, we can say overall that uh, the core values are reflected in the overall organization structure and the sub values are reflected in the departments etc. So, we have one example of Deal and Kennedy. They are the pioneers of the organization culture who see it from the national and the cultural point of view. Organization culture from this perspective can be said to be central to the organizational success rather than giving importance to the structure, strategy and the politics. We have another definition given by the Martis and Martins which was way back in 2003. It defines the organization culture as a system of the shared meaning held by the members distinguishing the organization from the other organizations. It uh, another Arnold in 2005 he designates that organization culture is a distinctive norm, belief, principle and the ways of behaving that combine to give each organization its distinct character. So, here we have uh, discussed about three definitions uh, of the organization culture and more or less uh, the center is around the common beliefs, the shared vision which they have and of course uh, the principles which are being followed in the organizations and how they behave uh, with each other in that organization and uh, definitely every organization has its own culture for that matter. Now, the studies have also equated what personalities is to an individual is the same as the culture is from an organization. The Sheen defines the culture as a pattern of the shared basic assumptions learned by a group as it also solved its problem of external adaption and internal integration which has worked well enough to be considered valid and therefore to be taught to new members as the correct way of to perceive, think and feel in relation to those problems. So, we have seen here that there is a pattern of the shared beliefs, there is a pattern of how people think, there is a pattern of uh, uh, internal and external integration. So, the culture differs on these parameters uh, in terms of how people think, how people behave and how they react on each of these problems. So, we have another definition given by Brown in 1998 which defines as follows, the organization culture is the pattern of belief values learned ways of coping with experience that have developed during the course of an organization history which tends to be manifested in its material arrangements and in the terms of behaviors of its members. So, now we have the components, uh, what are the various important components of the organization culture? The first is the vision. Now, the employees of the organization envisions to take the organization to a place of eminence in the future. Even already established companies never lose the sight of their vision. The vision is the desired state particular to the organization and in every entity in the organization's work in order to achieve the aforesaid vision. The vision forms an essential part of the culture of the organization. Now see every organization has its basic vision and to take up the organization to next levels and every organization envisions this that they want to make up a place, a good place for that organization in the future. And whatever and how, however how many years they have spent to make up the mark in the market, even if they have penetrated the market uh, to a great extent, no company loses its long term vision. So, long term vision and the vision of the company is all, all, always uh, a matter of eminence uh, that every organization wants to take up in the future. Now, the second is a core value. Now, when you talk about the core value, there are those guidelines which are essential and have a typical organizational ferrog. These guidelines when developed are communicated and consistently followed. Therefore, the core values becomes an essential part of the organizational culture and are employed as everyday guide for effective decision making. The core values are enshrined in the constitution of the philosophy of the organization and are consistently involved in the goals and the views of the organization. 
So we have discussed about the core values of the organization. The core values are always in the roots of the organization. Whatever strategies, policies, programs the organization follows, it is never against those core values and it is consistently uh, involved in every each and every step of the organization uh, which the organization views. So we have discussed here about the components of the organization culture. The first uh, component which we discussed was the vision. Uh, which every organization envisions uh, and is a matter of eminence which the organization wants to take it to the future level. Then we have the core values. The core values are always uh, in the core and enshrined in the constitution and the philosophy of the company. Then the third most important uh, factor of the organization is the practices. The organizational practices, for example, they are called as the activities which are carried out in the organization in a religious manner. Whatever the organization practices in reality determines what it needs to achieve. Therefore, the practices are always in tune with the organizational visions and values and form an essential component of overall culture of the organization. Then we have the fourth component called the people. The most important resource of any organization is its human resource. Similar to constitution following an organizational culture, it is imperative to have those people who have easily fitted into the culture of the organization. Employees also play a very important role in building and imbibing and sustaining the culture of the organization. The legends, stories, heritage, myths, etc. are the narratives of the organization. The employee organizational culture depicts the way of the life in an organization. Narratives therefore talk about the organizational history and emphasize on the organizational values. So we have discussed here till now the five organizational factors which is a part of the organizational culture. The first we discussed was the vision followed by the core values, the practices, the people and the narratives. And now we have another important factor which is called as the communication and climate. As we also know that communication plays a very important role in every step in whatever we introduce in every small step which the organization takes. Unless and until the communication is clear and brief, it is not uh, taken in the right spirit and uh, it will have a deep negative impact on the organizational activities. So let us do this in detail. This point specifies the environmental prevailing in the organization. This determines whether the organization is safe to be or has a threatening environment. The organization though its elements naturally conveys and communicates about its own essence. Employees do ask whether they feel safe, whether or not they are protected and appreciated and soon and so on. This component also specifies that what is the experience of the employee when they communicate, are they fearful or free going and when the employees are re restricted to convey a particular type of the information, they feel bounded which the organization may result in organization losing the valuable information. So we should have a good communication network which is protected and appreciated at all levels. It should be clear and of course when the employees are restricted to convey a particular type of information they feel bounded which the result in losing the valuable information. The last and the most important factor of the organization climate is the place. The place in which the organization also forms a major component of the organizational climate and the culture. The particular place may be known as for a certain kind, for example, the Silicon Valley. The geography, architecture, design have a great impact on the values and the behavior of the people in that organization. Now, when you are, you know, restricted uh, to one place, the culture, the core values, the local culture, they impact your values. And as a matter of fact, that is why we say that the place where you are in, in this we have given the example of a Silicon Valley, the architectural design, the geographical design and the, it, they have a great impact on the value system, on the behavior of the people and they impact them to a great extent. Now coming on to a very important question, how employees learn about the culture? The culture is passed on to the employees in a numerous manners, the tries and bear enlist some of the significant ways in which the culture is passed on. The rites, rituals, myths and saga. We will discuss these one by one. The first is the rites. They are the dramatic set of planned activities which consolidate where cultural, various cultural expressions into one event. These are called as the rites. Because we have people uh, from various uh, cultures, we have different values. So the rights, they consolidate 
everything together to form a culture. Followed by the rituals, it is definitely uh, one of the ways in which the organization learns and how the employee learn about the culture. First is the right, which is definitely a dramatic set of planned activities in relation to all consolidated cultural expressions uh, into one event. Followed by the rituals, a standardized detailed set of techniques and the behaviors, they also uh, give them a dais to learn about the organization culture. Then we have a myth, a dramatic narrative of the imagined events and a saga that is a historical narrative descriptive unique accomplishments of the organization. So these are the four parameters which help in learning um, you know, the culture by the employees. Then we have another six more, the legend, the story, symbol, values and language. First let us discuss what do you mean by a legend. A wonderful event of the past embellished with the fictional details. Then we have a story that is the narrative based on the rare events with a blend of truth and fiction. Then we have a symbol. It is a means to convey meaningful usually to represent things. Then we have the values that is the life directing attitudes which guide the behavioral actions. Then we have a language, a form in which the members of a group uses the sounds and written languages to convey the meanings. So if you want to uh, the employees to learn the culture of the organization, we have discussed uh, that they will be centering around the rites, the rituals, the myth, the saga, the legend, story, symbol, values and the language. Now what are the most important factors? which is going to affect the organization culture. This is the most important part of the lecture. The first is the organizational context. The first and the foremost influential factor that affects the climate is the management philosophy. If the company is wedded to such a policy that it effectively utilizes its resources, both human as well as non-human, then it can be concluded that the climate is good. So the first and the foremost thing which we have to study as far as the factors of the organizational climate is concerned is the organizational context which centers around to see how the company uh, you know have a functional policies in which uh, it is able to utilize the resources uh, to the best possible extent and if they are able to do so we call it as that this is a good climate followed by the organizational structure. The structure of the organization represents another variable that affects the climate. It needs no relationship and delineates authority and the functional responsibility. Uh, so we have discussed here the factors affecting the organizational climate. The first we discussed in detail was the organizational context followed by the organizational structure. Then the third most important factor which is going to affect the organizational climate is the process. In every organization. Certain processes are vital so that it runs communication, decision making, motivation, leadership are some of the very important process through which the management carries out its objectives. The physical environment, the external conditions of the environment, the size and location of the building in which the employee works, the size of the city, weather, they also have an impact on the organizational climate. Like for example, you are working in a cosmopolitan uh, city and you are working with a rural environment, both the uh, concepts will have a different uh, impact on the organizational culture and the climate. Now we have another system and values and norms. Every organization has discernible and fairly evident formal value system. Whether certain kinds of behaviors are rewarded and encourage and certain kinds of behavior forces and individuals to formal sanctions. The formal value system is communicated to the employees through the rules, regulations and the policies. So here we do not have to talk much about it because whatever is the value system, whatever are the norms, they are being deliberated to all the employees in a very formal way uh, by the way of uh, giving them some kind of notification, some kind of uh, mandates etc. Then how to develop the organizational culture? We have discussed till now that what are the factors affecting the organizational culture in which the organizational context, the structure, process, physical environment and the value system and the norms, they have a deep impact. Now it is primarily the major responsibility of the people to build up the culture, to build up uh, a good environment, a culture, environmental culture in which the people will work. Because if this is so, 
the people will be happy to be a part of the organization, the labor turnover would be less, the performance levels would go high. The organizational culture is a shared belief and of course in general way of doing things in the organization. This shared beliefs has stemmed from the numerous people practicing those beliefs and achieving the success at, at that. When we try to analyze the origin of the culture of an organization, it points out towards the four founders of the organization. The system, values, beliefs, endeavors, ideologies that the founders of the organization prune in the edifices of the organization have a major contribution on the organizational early culture. The whole process involves three steps. First, the founder chooses upon the set of the people who are already ready to embrace the way of working as envisaged by the founder. Two, the new employees are trained and developed and embrace the particular way of thinking as advocated by the founders. Three, the founders are the role models or any organization, their thought process, value orientation, beliefs and assumptions are followed by the organizations. Gradually, these attributes of the founder members become entrenched in the culture of the organization. So, we have discussed that how the organizations can build up their environment. We have uh, majorly three points in under which the discussion uh, revolves like uh, for example the new employees have joined so you have to train those new employees to adapt uh, whatever uh, thinking process the management philosophy has the role models which they have to follow the process which has already been adopted by the uh, by the company you have to make them understand about the value orientation you have to make them understand about the beliefs etc so if you are able to do that we are able to have a good organizational climate not only this Gradually, all the attributes, what, what the founder members want you to do that, if you are doing that, the success is not far. So, the culture creation is also hugely impacted by the success stories. The success itself becomes the desired outcome and the means of attaining that success becomes a success mantra. This mantra slowly embedded in the system which employees follow. The whole culture creation process is not a one day event, it may take a time to be formulated, once it is formulated it becomes a way of life. So we have also seen here that uh, besides those three steps which the management wants the new incumbent or the people who are a part of the organization to adapt, there are certain other parameters also and the other, other paradigms also which have to be incorporated to make the culture good. For example. Uh, if you tell your people something about success stories, the outcomes itself becomes the most important factor on the basis of which the success will depend upon. So the success story, the success itself becomes a desired outcome which the organization is trying to form. So the it becomes a success mantra and slowly this mantra embedded in the system which the employees follow, they also want to you know, have the success at any cost, they would try to adapt those value systems, those means, uh, those creativity, those uh, actions and they would like to formulate that uh, in the real life of the company and uh, overall culture. So, most of the organization cultures today resembles the attributes of their four founders because the founders have a deep comprehension, the founders have a deep connotations, the founders have also a broader vision which they want the organization to adopt uh, till the end. For instance, IKEA has a culture of thrift, innovation and uncomplicated, no-nonsense approach which the organization has imbibed from its founder Ingevar Kamprat. He has born, he was born in Slaman area, region of Sweden. IKEA's culture and values are built around the smell and legacy. Similarly, other organizations have largely culture based upon their founder, uh, like for example, the leaders as Bill Gates at the Microsoft and the, uh, and the Richard Branson at the Virgin Group. So, creating a culture is very important. However, sustaining, reviving, augmenting it at a requisite periods and drawing the conclusions is also very important. Organizational culture thrive and consequence survive when these practices aim to maintain the culture by providing the employees a similar sort of experience. The process of selection of employees subsequent to training and development promotion criteria should be taken uh, into considerations and the organization culture already present in that organization. So overall we can say 
that uh, uh, the selection of the employees should be primarily uh, good and the role of the top level management should also be very important because whatever emanates it emanates from the top and of course uh, for example the CEO of the company has the habit of coming late to the office then this may stem down the lower ranks in the office and in the similar manner if the company chairman believes in managing resources recycling product and not wasting an iota of resources then most probably this will send a message to the employees. The leaders always act as a role model and employees gradually learn to follow. So then we have a socialization, the process of adapting to a new climate and changes. Uh, and overall, we can say that an appropriate approach must be followed uh, in the organization. And uh, the new employees need to be trained about the culture and uh, uh, which the organization is following. And of course, it may so happen that the new incumbents may disturb the way things are going around in the organization. Alignment with the culture requires the indoctrination and the culture needs to be indoctrined the employees about the same. So we have discussed today the organizational climate, the organizational culture in detail, what are the factors impacting them, how you can build up the organization structure and overall uh, the mileage and the benefits uh, of a good culture can be on the organizational uh, performance and the overall performance of the employees as well. If the employees are working in a good culture and climate, uh, the results would be definitely good and they would grow. Similarly, the organization would also grow. Thank you so much. With this note, thank you ma'am. Thank you so very much for giving us a very, very productive session. And dear friends, we believe that you might have liked today's lecture, though we have some uh, few minutes left over here. So uh, on behalf of the students, I would like to ask Dr. Namita Rajput, as we have talked uh, uh, in detail about the organization's culture as well as climate, which is very, very crucial for the employees to give their uh, better and the best. So uh, the company or the organization should develop uh, programs and policies uh, regularly from time to time uh, so that it becomes easier for the new employees also who have uh, recently roped in into the organization. So uh, what should the company do? See we have discussed so many factors in which we can actually build up the organization culture like for example if any of the individual joins the organization or a new incumbent is there. So there should be a clarity on the company philosophy in the beginning, uh, the shared vision, the mission of the company should be very clear to the organization that how the culture philosophy is moving on, what kind of uh, you know the basis is there for the selection of the employees, how the changes are managed. So each and every paradigm and each and every important and the pertinent factor must be kept in mind and uh, should be very made clear to the new incumbent so that when he becomes a part of the organization, he is familiar with uh, the, the choices of the organization, the philosophies of the organization and he moves with that flow. And uh, definitely he should be, uh, you know, be made very clear about the organization climate also and about the culture also. So the information which is being uh, deliberated from the top level management on to the lower level and the new incumbents is uh, definitely very helpful and some kind of orientation sessions, some kind of uh, uh, the sessions uh, for the awareness of these company policy programs, climate and uh, culture must be given to the employee and could be a one week training to them so that they are well versed with the basic philosophies of the organization. So I think this would be uh, a good step on the organization. So dear friends, if you have questions like these to be asked from Dr. Namita Rajput, then do write to us at info.cc at the rate nic .in. We would try to give answers to your uh, questions uh, through our live sessions and uh, uh, for contacting us, uh, do write to us at info.cc at the rate .in. This is the email ID which I have shared again and this lecture is going to be uploaded on YouTube very soon. We would be meeting again and would be discussing on another topic under the series Organizational Behavior. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again. Yeah.